to get the actual pattern, <laughs> out of the way, to get the pattern, I tipped it on its side and I drew round it. Now, when you don't do that, don't get your pen and draw right into the corners. Put your pen vertically down at the side of your scanning cut. Let me just show you. Turn it over. So you get your pen and vertically. Don't try and get right into there. Vertically down and draw it. So really, it's going to like give you like a quarter of an inch all the way around. Maybe a bit more. Um, so that's your side. And then we're going to measure. So the next piece of material is just going to be one loop that goes over the top because we've just done our sides. So down to the bottom, over the top, and down to the bottom. And that's about 20 inches, really. Um, the 20 inch it, it. shut up that's my cat <laughs> yeah it's it's a little bit under 20 inches but when i sew it um and then across here is edge to edge is about 20 and a half inches so i've got 20 inches by 21 inches so i'm going to line it you don't have to line it if you don't want to i am going to line mine so I've got some material that I quite like for the top, but I've also got some material that I don't like at all. Um, it came for a Christmas project and it's like paper, th it's, it's really thin. I don't like it at all. And uh, I like the pattern, I just don't like this. So that's gonna be the lining because nobody's gonna see it and it's Christmassy. Um, but saying that, it can be reversed. I think this will be probably reversible because I'm gonna, edge inside as well so that's the good news don't forget you must put seam allowances on this whatever seam allowances you like uh, you can put on here all the way around and on your straight um, bit over too because I you, you've just had the exact measurements so this is the exact measurement so you need seam allowances on, uh, both lots of material underneath because I'm going to put them both out together so I've just slipped one underneath the other. Get my rotary cutter. I need a new blade on this. Uh... So that's that's that. So we need, now we just need the length. Okay, and now we just need to cut this. Do it this side, sorry. I've got the 21, we just need 20, um, 20 and a half. We've already got, shush! Where's my little boy? Had a bit of a trim. Go, go away. I know, I love you too. the material cut to go over so now we've got this nice piece and it's all ready to put our pattern on where did we put our pattern did you take that pattern did you knock it over you did didn't you you are well i need i need to do that actually i need two don't i we need two let's get the pattern put the pattern on the 
and some seam allowances here. So So that's pretty good, isn't it? That is pretty good, my little boy. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Now we've got a pelon, two sided fusible. We cut it the same. We're going to iron the material on the front and then we're going to iron the material on the back uh, once we've cut out the shape. And then we're going to sew it tight. Right, so you've, you've drafted your pattern, you've cut out your fabric. You've cut out your peloton, you use the fabric as your, as your shape, and cut out your peloton. Now you iron your peloton, fabric one side, iron it. Next side, iron the next lot of fabric on this side. Um, same with the ends. So that, that's all prepared. Now we need to quilt it. Uh, I guess you could do it without it, but I think that'd go baggy after a while. You need, it needs to be some sort of quilting. I'm gonna play and put I don't know, my name on it, the scanning cut on it, um, something on it. Also put a bag on the back of it. You could also put a pocket on the back of it uh, to put things in. I'm not gonna do that um, because I've had things with pockets and I don't put things in because when you try and get them, they will fall out. When you try and take it off, and it, unless it's got a zipper on it where it's not gonna move, which is probably, Probably be a very good idea, maybe, maybe put one on the back with a zipper on. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to make a bag specially for my bits and pieces. The next stage is cutting some binding for it. Uh, so we're going to be binding the inside, not the outside. And, um, and I think I'm going to do it in the same colour because I might be able to make this reversible so at Christmas time because I've got Christmas paper, Christmas paper, because I've got Christmas material inside, I maybe can flip it out and it can look nice on the outside too. So I might do that. So, oh, this is so much fun, you know, doing this, isn't it? The world's the oyster. We can do what are we, is that right? Is the world's the oyster? <laughs> no. The world's my oyster. Is that because you, there's lots of oysters all over the world? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, sometimes I just come out with these things. <laughs> I'm sure it's something like that anyway. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, moving on. You can see this is all being... Well, you can't see. <laughs> but, you, but you can now. <laughs> see, I've um, quilted it. Just wiggles. I put wiggles. You can put lines across and you make it be as beautiful as any way you, you like um, and obviously then uh, sew around the sides all the way around the sides just a fraction of an inch really just to hold, hold the sides all together or so it's all nice and on your big piece all of that's being sewn oh sorry about that yeah and uh, all the edges have all just been sewn down it makes it easier to um, sew inside and you're going to clip it onto one side. Well, actually, it's right sides together, isn't it? So it's like this. There is it. And I'm going to be using these little clips. I'm going to work this uh, all the way around, down to the bottom. So I suggest you put the two bottom ends in first to make sure, because you can ease the rest in. So you put your two bottom ends in, so it's like that. But you want lots and lots of clips so you can ease it all the way in all the way around and then do your um, stitch allowance whatever you've give yourself all the way around and then the same exactly the same on that side so then when that's finished then you can put your binding on on that side and then put your binding on that side 
and then you will put a binding on all of the bottom. Thought I'd quilted them all and I missed one. That's when you know you're getting old. Had it all organized. I lost these for a little bit because I was trying to find what I wanted, um, vinyl. I have lots and lots and lots of vinyl because um, I do my, my grandchildren's little tops with different animals on and I love doing it. <laughs> It's really, you know, I've got a lot of embroidery stuff and in the hoop stuff that you just, oh, it's great. It's, it's really is. I never thought, I, I just tried it one day and, and that was it. I was hooked. And, uh, and I've been hooked on embroidery and doing that sort of thing. I just buy the t-shirts in the sale normally um, or cheap t-shirts because you know what kids are like. They're going to wear them and that's it. Right, so this, see little bits of blue on it. So I thought maybe this would look nice on it and um or i could do the because it's going to be for christmas or i could do the red this is all i'm doing to doing the quilting side of this you can do this with any sort of like foot this is this is a top edge foot really but it's not meant for this i've got the stitch length on three I do have all the rulers and this, that and the other, but I don't need to do that on this. I have checked all of this out on the back, but I've tested it. You must always test it to make sure. So I have a little spare piece of this stuff. And I'm not pushing it, I'm letting it do it itself. I'm just going to go around doing the sides. have to be perfect because it is going to be taken up with the seam allowance so I can't find my little there you go just do my threads as I go have check you see perfect on the back absolutely perfect on the back perfect on the front all the stitches are the same length so no extra long stitches there. So now we're going to put this together, which is the more trickier bit. Make sure it's the longest um, side we're putting together because one's, one's like a half an inch or an inch shorter or something. Um, so it's the longest side that we're putting together. So that end is all nice and flat against there. So I know that that is going to be sewn together. I put two clips on either side. I'll put two on that side and I'm going to put two on this side. And they're all level. Then I'm going to put one in the middle. So we've done that side and we've done this side and now wind it up to make sure it's nice and straight but this is what we're going to be sewing all the way around the sides now so we've got them on so around and we've got the angle it, you need to grade it up slightly if any of the corners are sticking out test it on your machine this fits very comfortably actually wide at the bottom because you've got a lo long very long piece um when we do the binding uh, it's a bit hard if you like to pull it in here because it's so long um to keep it flat but it's fine it's just meant to be a cover and your binding will then end up as uh, as it is a binding, so it helps it pull it all together. We've got all our strips together. This is the easiest part. Okay, so, so it's gonna look like this. So this is it. Okay, so right side facing up to me. This is right side down and 
if I fold it over to make a continuous line, over there, corner to corner, you will see it, it will make a continuous line. So when you fold back, you know you've got to sew from that corner to this corner. And that's what we're gonna do. Draw the line if you want to. You can use a piece of tape on your Benina to get a nice straight line and follow it through. But since I've been doing this for a very long time, I'm literally just gonna eyeball that. Just to show you. So there you go, you've got your continuous line. And you do that with all your pieces, all your um, binding. You need to cut that back down to a quarter of an inch. You do that with all of them. So when you open it up, now you need to iron this all the way along. Now, if you want to, if you're like me, you might want to iron it in half. This is how you're going to put it on your actual um, cover anyway. But you may not want to iron it. You may, it's, you know, some people like it. Some people don't like it. Um, I like it. I, I think it, it works better for me. Only because it keeps the edges together. Because I've tried it without it and it, I struggle to keep the edges together. Okay, so this has got my 71 foot on, a Benina 71, it's a, a lap seam foot. I'm using it just as a straight stitch at the moment, going all, I've got my uh, binding folded. I did iron it um, because I do like those edges when I top stitch on the other side, I do like to catch the sharp edge. Um, so be careful as you go around here on one side you're just going to go straight all the way around and it's the other side that i'm actually going to use the lap foot uh, side of things right make sure you put your arm of your sewing machine up now we'll take your bits off um because it is it's actually very easy to actually put the first um on going around that's quite easy to do but now you're going to put the other side on it gets a little awkward so because we're enclosing all the raw edges now <laughs> so you fold it over and have to you don't need one of these <laughs> you don't need a foot like this look how difficult i've made this look it's actually not <laughs> really made this look difficult it's actually not really there you go now i can put it over there you go that was an easy i made that really look difficult it's actually not on this machine so now we're just gonna of course if you didn't have one of these feet you would just turn it over and sew that side all the raw edges are now incorporated inside of there. So that's where that's done. Now, when I do the edges of this, the bottom, that's where when you put the binding on the first time, the second time you don't, it don't need to because it's already stretched. But you do try and pull, pull the binding taut as you're going round just to incorporate all of this bias edge that you've got all the way around, um, just to make it a little bit more sturdy on the bottom. Right, when we do this side, you do the short side. I want you to leave a long tail on the short side. Just leave a long tail because that's where we're gonna join it on the side. So that's enough tail on this side. And then we're just basically going to go all the way around. And then we're just going to, I'm just going to show you how to easily join the tails without any gadgets. Right, okay, so you've got your two tails. You're sewn around there. Whatever the thickness of this is, 
which we know it's two and a quarter inches because I did it. So you're going to lie the first one down. Right to that edge where you've stitched up to. And cut it off. And two and a quarter inches the other way. So get your ruler. So we've cut this bit and that goes up to that stitch line exactly. Two and a quarter inches, sorry. From that stitch, which is there. And that's where you cut it off. Okay, then all you're going to do is take this, take this, and take this, a bit like you did before. The only thing is it gets a little bit awkward because you you haven't really got much room in the, the middle because this is stiff. So one goes one way and one goes the other way. Right, now I won't deny that this is not tricky because it is because you haven't got a lot of room. So when you fold it like I showed you how to fold it, you, you'll have to pin it because it, it really is, if you can ever see it, really is a tricky little thing. You'll do like you did when you joined these up. You're binding up in the first place. That fits your quilt. Exactly the right size that it fits your quilt. These are the ways and these are the little gadget you can buy. They all work. It depends on which one you, you find works best for you. That's to me. Actually, although once you get, it is tricky to learn, but once you get, get it, you've already learned how to do your binding. So it's exactly, exactly the same. And then, but if you do do it wrong and you do cut off too much material, don't worry about it. Just get another piece of binding and pick some stitches Stitch on another little piece of binding and uh, and start again. There's always a way when you can fix those sort of things. Very few things are unfixable. Don't forget, though, to stitch it all back down. So go back over your work and stitch it all back down. Fold over this on the opposite side. Onto the goods. Now, you can do this one way or the other way. It depends on which what look you like i'm going to be doing top stitching on here but if you did it the other way around that that also looks very nice and lots of people actually do it that way around but i'm not i'm going to do it this way around but i am going to use the clips this time so i'm going to be clipping all the way around to make sure i get it pretty even because i don't want big lumps and not see it on the other side so I'm going to be clipping it pretty even all the way around and then I'm going to top stitch it. So I'm going to use a different foot again.